Mediator is a fantastic tool for decoupling behaviors and allowing for easier testing. But sometimes you want a little bit more. Sometimes you'd really like a pipeline. Let's mash on that. Hi everybody and welcome to another episode of the ASP Net Monsters. In today's episode, I'm gonna take you through behaviors as part of Mediator. So if you haven't seen our previous videos on Mediator, I will link them below and it's worth watching those. But Mediator is a tool that allows you to decouple uh, your functionality in a way that is kind of message driven. Uh, so within a controller or within a part of your application, you can send a Mediator command and that will cause Mediator to do a bunch of things, uh, basically fire a handler for what it is that you have. Uh, and then Mediator also supports publishing events. So it's basically like a service bus inside of your application. But one of the things that would be really nice to have is the ability to tie into the Mediator pipeline and call events or call code uh, as messages come in and out of your handlers. Uh, this has been made possible in Mediator 3 and higher by using behaviors. So let's take a look and see what one of those would look like. Uh, it is almost illegal for me to do any sort of application that deals with cross-cutting concerns without using the example of adding logging. So let's start with that. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna create a new class uh, I have Mediator all set up in this project here, and I have a single handler in here, uh, which gets the hotel cost of, or reserves a hotel for more, something like that. The, the behavior is not really important. Uh, but let's go and add a class here that is going to be a logging behavior. So let's put this logging. Uh, and what we want to do here is we want to implement. Uh, this interface here, so it's an I pipe line. Sure. That's spelled properly. I pipeline behavior, uh, T request response, and then we're gonna steal this little bit here and put that on our class as well. Uh, and then we can implement that interface. So it's gonna look like this here. So what we have here is some sort of request coming in and then some sort of a response where we need to fire next. So next is just do the next thing in the pipeline. So the next thing in the pipeline could be call the handler, it could be call about behavior. We don't know when we're inside of this behavior. Uh, so don't make too many assumptions about what may or may not have happened already. Uh, but you do have access to everything inside of this request. So I'm just going to do a, a next here. Uh, and I'm going to just use the standard logging inside of this framework. Public logging behavior. And we'll take in an I log. Logger, I think it is. It's just logging. Perfect. Logger. Declare that as a field with an initializer. There we go. Uh, so now within here, uh, we can do things like um, make this async. Ah, async, not a wait. There we go. Uh, and then within here, I can do things like logger dot log. Uh, and then at the bottom here, and ID, I'll just do a uh, log debug. There we go. Uh, and then we get a response back here, and we just make sure we return that. So we can also add a log message here. We could say, calling some handler and Call some handler. Just like this. Uh, so we can try kicking this off and we'll see what this looks like. 
So in our home controller here on our index method, we're going to send a hotel reservation request. Uh, so that's going to be processed, but it should hit our login behavior. Actually, it won't hit a login behavior yet because I haven't actually registered the login behavior. So let's see what this looks like before we register the login behavior and then after we register the login behavior. Assuming that this ever starts up, there we go. So we send it, we're gonna hit here. Let's put a breakpoint there. And we'll put a breakpoint on our logging behavior too, which should not get hit yet. All right, so there we go. We've hit this uh, log this uh, handler here, and it's going to return some value, which I don't know if we even do. We print that out. We do print it out right here. Okay, great. So let's go and register that behavior. So normally, when we register mediator, we'll do it in the startup here, and we just do services dot add mediator. Uh, so this will find any handlers inside of your application, but we also need to add now these behaviors. So we need to add those explicitly here. Uh, and it's gonna look like this. So we're adding a transient. So that means it's gonna be recreated each time we call it. Uh, a pipeline behavior. And this little syntax here, it looks odd, but this is just basically saying, I'm registering this open generic uh, type in here. So it means that we can get anything we want in here. So any message that gets sent through here uh, is gonna be intercepted with this. So let's go and run this again and we'll see that we intercept it. All right, so this page is loading up ever so quickly. Uh-oh, uh, it wasn't able to activate my method, I can just swoop in and fix that. And I think probably I was just registering the logger properly there, or not using a logger properly. All right, there we go. So I've registered the log behavior properly this time or uh, injected it properly here. And we will kick this off again. And over here, we should see that this handler is gonna be caught or this uh, behavior is gonna be fired. Uh, and it should be fired before we get into the handler itself. So there we go. So we're, we're logging this. If if we continue on here, then we're going to end up inside of our handler. And then let's throw a breakpoint here. We'll come back out through this behavior again. Uh, so that gives you an idea of how to do something really simple, like a logging behavior around this. Uh, and in fact, if we go and take a look at our output here, we should probably see those log messages. There we go. Calling some handler did call some handler. Uh, but if we want to do something that's a little bit more exciting, we can actually modify the messages coming in and out of Mediator. So if you need to put something, some generic property on each message that comes in, so for instance, decorating it with username perhaps, um, or uh, modifying the output in some way, we can do that. So I have an example here where we're going to apply a tax rate to the message is coming out here. So we'll call this uh, GST behavior. And I have this implemented already. So I'll just copy and paste that over here. Uh, but basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna take uh, our output and we're gonna modify the cost field on it. Uh, so what I've done here is I've said that there's any properties that are called cost, uh, then we're going to multiply them by 1.05, which is our tax rate. Uh, so this this could be done differently if I knew kind of the shape of the message is coming in and out, but I want to be able to handle anything that has a cost field on it. So even if we have 
another message so long as it has a cost field on it we want to multiply it by this 1.05 uh, but here we go we want to take this and we'll register that in our home controller here it's sorry in our startup here sure, we'll just copy this one and we'll call it a gst behavior and start that up Uh, another number that should come back. We're working in 22 back, so we should get 22 multiplied by 1.05 coming back now. No breakpoints. Let's continue over these. And there we go. 2310 comes back. So we were able to modify the cost property coming up. Uh, so this sort of behavior allows us to handle cross-cutting concerns. So things that you want to do across all of your handlers or across a subset of your handlers, uh, but you don't want to rewrite the code in a bunch of different places. So super useful uh, and certainly a lot easier to, to understand and use than explicitly going out and using an AOP framework. All right, well, thanks everybody for joining us on this episode of the ASP.NET Monsters. Remember to like, comment, share, reblog, whatever it is that you feel you need to do. And we'll see everybody on the next episode.